Chris Christofferson was an American country music singer, songwriter, and actor. He was a pioneering figure in the outlaw country movement of the 1970s, moving away from the polished Nashville sound and toward a more raw, introspective style. Born June 22, 1936, Brownsville, Texas, United States. Died September 28, 2024, age 88 years, Maui, Hawaii, United States. Spouse, Lisa Myers, M1983-2024, Rita Coolidge, M1973-1980, Fran Beer, M1960-1969. Children, Tracy Christofferson, Casey Christofferson, Seymour. Height, 1.83 meters. Parents, Lars Henry Christofferson, Mary, and Ashbrook. Chris Christofferson net worth $50 million. Personal life. In 1961, Christofferson married his longtime girlfriend Frances Frand Mavia Beer, but they divorced in 1969. Christofferson briefly dated Janis Joplin before her death in October 1970. His second marriage was to singer Rita Coolidge in 1973, ending in divorce in 1980. Christofferson married Lisa Myers in 1983. Christofferson and Myers owned a home in Los Flores Canyon in Malibu, California, and maintained a residence in Hana, Hawaii, on the island of Maui. Christofferson had eight children from his three marriages, two from his first marriage, one from his second marriage, and five from his marriage to his third wife. Christofferson said that he would like the first three lines of Leonard Cohen's Bird on the Wire on his tombstone. Early Life and Education Christopher Christofferson was born in Brownsville, Texas, to Mary and Nay Ashbrook and Lars Henry Christofferson, a U.S. Army Air Corps officer, later a U.S. Air Force Major General. During Christofferson's childhood, his father encouraged him to pursue a military career. Death Christofferson died at his home on Maui on September 28, 2024, at the age of 88. Career After leaving the Army in 1965, Christofferson moved to Nashville. Struggling for success in music, he worked at odd jobs in the meantime while burdened with medical expenses resulting from his son's defective esophagus. He and his wife divorced in 1968. Christofferson got a job sweeping floors at Columbia Recording Studios in Nashville. He met June Carter there and asked her to give Johnny Cash a tape of his. She did, but Cash put it on a large pile with others. He also worked as a commercial helicopter pilot for South Louisiana firm Petroleum Helicopters International, PHI, based in Lafayette, Louisiana. Christofferson recalled of his days as a pilot, that was about the last three years before I started performing, before people started cutting my songs. I would work a week down here for PHI, sitting on an oil platform and flying helicopters. Then I'd go back to Nashville at the end of the week and spend a week up there trying to pitch the songs, then come back down and write songs for another week. I can remember, help me make it through the night, I wrote sitting on top of an oil platform. I wrote Bobby McGee down here, and a lot of them. Weeks after giving Carter his tapes, Christofferson landed a helicopter in Cash's front yard, gaining his full attention. A story about Christofferson having a beer in one hand and some songs in the other upon arrival was reputed, but was later refuted, with Christofferson saying, it was still kind of an invasion of privacy that I wouldn't recommend. To be honest, I don't think he was there. John had a pretty creative memory. Upon hearing Sunday Morning Comin' Down, however, Cash decided to record it, and in 1970 Christofferson won Song of the Year for the song at the Country Music Association Awards. In 1966, Dave Dudley released a successful Christofferson single, Vietnam Blues. In 1967, Christofferson signed to Epic Records and released a single, Golden Idol Slash Killing Time, but the song was not successful. Within the next few years, more Christofferson originals hit the charts performed by Roy Drewsky, Jody and the Kid, Billy Walker and the Tennessee Walkers, From the Bottle to the Bottom, Ray Stevens, Sunday Morning Comin' Down, Jerry Lee Lewis, Once More with Feeling, Farron Young, Your Time's Comin' and Roger Miller, Me and Bobby McGee, Best of All Possible Worlds and Darby's Castle. He was successful as a performer following Johnny Cash's introduction of him at the Newport Folk Festival. In 1971, 
Janis Joplin, who had dated Christofferson, had a number one hit with Me and Bobby McGee from her posthumous album Pearl. It stayed on the number one spot on the charts for weeks. More hits followed from others, Ray Price, I'd Rather Be Sorry, Joe Simon, Help Me Make It Through the Night, Bobby Bear, Please Don't Tell Me How the Story Ends, O.C. Smith, Help Me Make It Through the Night, Jerry Lee Lewis, Me and Bobby McGee, Patty Page, I'd Rather Be Sorry, and Peggy Little, I've Got to Have You. Country music performer Kenny Rogers recorded some of Christofferson's songs, including a version of Me and Bobby McGee in 1969 with a first edition for the Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town album. Christofferson released his second album, The Silver Tongue Devil and I, in 1971. It included Lovin', Her Was Easier, Than Anything I'll Ever Do Again. This success established Christofferson's career as a recording artist. Soon after, Christofferson made his acting debut in the last movie, directed by Dennis Hopper, and appeared at the Isle of Wight Festival. A portion of his Isle of Wight performance is featured on the three-disc compilation, The First Great Rock Festivals of the 70s. In 1971, he acted in Cisco Pike and released his third album, Border Lord. The album was all new material and sales were sluggish. He also swept the Grammy Awards that year with numerous songs nominated, winning Country Song of the Year 4, Help Me Make It Through the Night. Christofferson's 1972 fourth album, Jesus Was a Capricorn, initially had slow sales, but the third single, Why Me, was a success and significantly increased album sales. It sold over one million copies, and was awarded a gold disc by the RIA on November 8, 1973. In 1972, Christofferson appeared with Rita Coolidge on British TV on BBC's The Old Grey Whistle Test, performing Help Me Make It Through the Night. Also in 1972, Al Green released his version of For the Good Times on the album I'm Still in Love with You.